This morning, we're launching a new series called Today's Real Heroes. Our national correspondent, Natalie Morales, is here with an unforgettable pair, Natalie. And it's a story you have to see to believe. Our real heroes today are Dick and Rick Hoyt, better known as Team Hoyt. And if you haven't heard of them yet, be prepared. They are almost legends in their own right, and you'll see right now why they are heroes to so many. This is one of the greatest love stories of all time. A story of a father who climbs mountains and runs to the ends of the earth and back to give his son a better life. A life that transcends the limitations of his body. Rick Hoyt's fight started at birth 44 years ago when the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. He looked beautiful and he was strong and he was laying on his stomach and I thought he was doing push-ups. But what it was, he was having spasms. The doctors told Dick and Judy Hoyt that their son had cerebral palsy and would never be able to walk or talk. They said, forget Rick, put him away, put him in an institution. He's going to be nothing but a vegetable for the rest of his life. And we said, no, we're not going to put Rick away. We're going to bring Rick home and bring him up like any other child. So when the Hoyt family went to the beach for a swim, Rick went too. He'd sink down to the bottom and he'd look up and start laughing. He played street hockey. We'd just get a stick and push him in a chair and hold a stick for him. We did everything with him that we did with the other two boys. And Rick responded. And you look in his eyes and he was looking right at you. And you could tell that he understood everything they were talking about. But it wasn't until he was 12 when Rick found his voice called the Hope Machine, a computer system created by a team of Tufts engineers. Hopefully people will look at me as an intelligent person and look past my disabilities. He could tell us exactly what he wanted, how he felt, you know, where he wanted to go. And it, it got him to go to school and he got to be able to talk to a lot of other people. It was at high school where Rick first learned of a five-mile charity road race for a paralyzed teenager. And he said, Dad, I have to do something for him. I want to let him know that life goes on. For Dick, who wasn't a runner, it was a call to action as a father. Rick told me, he said, Dad, when I'm running, it feels like my disability disappears. And that was all Dick needed to hear. Now, at the age of 66 and 44, Dick and Rick have run 950 races, 60 marathons, including their 25th Boston Marathon this year. They even started doing triathlons, competing in six Ironmans, the ultimate test of strength and endurance. All the way, Dick pulls, pushes, and carries Rick's 110-pound frame over the course of the 2.4-mile swim, 112-mile bike ride, and 26.2-mile run. So on this day, we're going for a leisurely stroll. This is a slower pace than you two normally go, right? Oh, this is a nice pace, too. <laughs> it's a good break. But they don't slow down for long. As long as we're still having fun, we're enjoying it, and we're healthy, we're going to continue doing it. But it's Rick's achievements on the sidelines that are most awe-inspiring. I may be disabled, but I live a very fulfilling life. Not only did Rick graduate from high school, but also from college, earning his degree from Boston University. And he now lives in his own apartment. I have shown to disabled people that they don't have to sit back and watch the world go by. They too can go to school, get a job, and be included in everyday life. The Hoyt's motto is simply, you can. And they've made so many believe anything is possible. He's competing in road races, he's competing in triathlons. And all of a sudden, all of these videos are popping up on us, and people are emailing them around the world, and it, it's just a great feeling. I read them an email they recently received, one of thousands, from a perfect stranger. I write this because I'm a father, and to my shame, I have been nothing like you, Dick. I have been selfish more than I've been selfless. I'm not raising my son the way I had intended to raise him, and up to this point, you could say, I have failed. But yesterday, in a moment's time, I was changed. My heart was broken when I saw how much you must love your son to put yourself through such agony that he might experience the thrill of the race. Yesterday, it became less about me 
and more about being my children's father. I thank you, sir. You hear this over and over again. Yes, yeah. It, it clearly is, it touches you every time. It really does, yeah. But you, you're more than a father. I mean, you are a hero to so many. Mm. And most importantly, you're a hero to, to Rick. I just think I'm, I'm myself, and I just love my family. And I just want to be the very best father I can be. <laughs> Jeffrey Lindhoyne, everybody! Way to go, Ricky! Way to go, dude!